I'm Nicole at Unidata, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to use Python AWIPS to request and write these amazing GOES GeoColor images. GeoColor is a derived product that gives us a close approximation of true color during the daytime, and then at night gives us a multispectral IR-based product that allows us to detect the differences between those low liquid water clouds and higher ice clouds. GeoColor is great for daytime aerosol detection, nighttime cloud detection, and since it's an approximation of true color, interpreting those images is extremely intuitive. This summer, we updated Unidata's publicly available edX server to include these data feeds, so there's no need to search for or download any external data. All we need is a Jupyter notebook, a few Python packages, including Python AWIPS, to get started. <laughs> To get started, I'm going to launch an example notebook that we have made available on the Python AWIPS GitHub. On this machine I'm working on, I have installed Python AWIPS using the source code with examples installation method. What this means is that I have a conda environment called Python 3 AWIPS and a collection of example notebooks, including the one I'll be demonstrating in this video. The instructions for installing Python AWIPS using this method are linked in the description of this video. To open the example notebook, I'll open my terminal and activate the Python 3 AWIPS environment by typing conda activate Python 3 AWIPS. Then I'll change directories to the Python AWIPS directory that contains the example notebooks. If you haven't updated Python AWIPS since the latest release, you'll want to next type git pull origin main, like this, to update the example notebooks. I've already updated my notebook, so I'll skip this step this time. And next, I'll type Jupyter Notebook Examples to open the example notebooks. This opens a new Jupyter tab in my browser. The notebook we're working with is located in this notebooks directory. And I'll click to open the Goes Sierra Product Writer notebook. This notebook has a few objectives associated with it. First, we'll use Python AWIPS to connect to an edX server. Then we'll use the data access layer to define and filter the data request for the new CIRAGO 16 products. Now, this notebook actually allows us to access and write three different products. In addition to GeoColor, we also have CloudSnow and DebraDust. I'll just be walking you through how to write and access the GeoColor images, but you'll have all the information that you need to access all three products in your own copy of this notebook. This notebook will also write images to their native resolution, so you'll get the best quality possible that you can use in presentations, posters, social media, or virtually any other application you could imagine. We additionally have the option to write each channel to its own image, which I'll skip in this demonstration and instead focus on the single RGB color image. Below the objectives are the hyperlinks to each section in the notebook, and the table of contents is also here in the sidebar. We can see that we'll start with an initial setup, including importing the required packages. If you don't have line numbers turned on, you can go to View Toggle Line Numbers to show them. To access data from the edX, we're importing the data access layer module from Python AWIPS. We're also going to be drawing the final image on a projected map, so we'll use a combination of Cardopy and Matplotlib to accomplish that. Next, we're setting up our edX connection to Unidata's public edX at edX-cloud.unidata.ucar.edu and creating a request object. The request object will contain all the information about which data we want to request from the edX. We set a series of filters as defined by the Python AWIPS API, like the data type, location, and times. These filters narrow down the data we'll receive from the edX once we actually submit the request. The first we'll apply is the data type, which we'll set using the setDataType method. Since GeoColor is a satellite product, we're choosing satellite as the input. After that, we're setting up our projection and map extent for plotting using values consistent with Go's metadata. Next, we're defining a new function called setSize, which takes an input width and height in pixels and converts it to inches. 
We need this conversion for the final output, since default Python methods require the size to be in inches. This will also remove a padded white space around the figure as well. In the next cell, we define the write img function, which will take our data, projection information, and metadata, and write our final figure to a file on disk. We also have the option to turn on or off a footnote in the final image that includes the product and time using a Boolean value. In the next cell is where we create and send the request to the edX server for the data. We start by defining the parameters for the request. First, we set the ghost sector, which we're choosing as East Conus or E Conus. The entities variable here shows that this notebook will loop through three different products, CloudSnow, Deborahdust, and GeoColor. In this video, we're only going to look at the GeoColor product, so I'll comment this line out and make a new entities variable that contains only the GeoColor product in a list. Lastly, we will set the R, G, and B channels needed for the image. In the next cell, we create the output directory. By default, this will write to a directory named output in the same directory where this notebook is saved to, but you can change it to any directory you'd like. It will also create the output directory if it doesn't exist. Next is where we are looping through the sectors, entities, and channels, and then sending off individual requests to the edX. We start by setting the sector, then setting the entity using the add identifier method. Then we start looping through the channels. Note that to create the final RGB image, we actually need to make three requests for data from the edX, one each for the red, green, and blue channels. Once we have each channel, we'll later combine them using NumPy. In this loop, we also set the time if it hasn't already been set. By default, we're setting the time to be the most recently available from the edX. Each channel then gets saved to its own variable for us to use later. This loop also writes each channel to its own unique image, which I don't need, so I'll be commenting out lines 48, 51, and 52 using control forward slash on my keyboard. After looping through each channel, we now have the R, G, and B arrays populated. For our image to draw correctly, the data array in each need to get scaled to a value between 0 and 1, and then we stack them into a 3D array using NumPy's dstack function. And we're almost there. Finally, we set the output file name and send the 3D array to the writeimg function we defined above. Now, for the moment we've all been waiting for, let's run it. This might take a few moments to complete, so I'll fast forward through this part. And here it is, our final geocolor image. And I can also navigate to the output directory in either the file explorer or through the Jupyter interface and see the PNG file there. We did it. If you're interested in more detail or related notebooks, you can check out the links at the bottom of this notebook as well. You can apply the same techniques we used here to any number of other datasets on an edX server. So, Go forth and create! If you need technical support, please send us an email at support awips at unidata.ucar.edu. Thanks for watching!